the language of love. Do you love me? The words rush out of me, and the instant they are spoken, I want to recall them. He sighs, a quick exhalation, and then frowns before ruffling my hair. Next week, I'll change the oil in the car and tune it up, too. It probably needs it. I need something, too, I want to say, but I don't. Instead, I murmur an assent and give him a hug, hoping my question has not ruined our evening, wondering why I think it might. What should I make for dinner? Anything. Anything that's easy. An apology, perhaps, for not saying what I want to hear. I love you with every bone in my body. Without you, my life is meaningless. You are everything to me. Your hair looks nice, he adds. But I turn away without a response, unwilling to let him see how vulnerable I am to him, how even such a little bit of verbal caressing can make me weak. There's ground meat. Are tacos okay? And the conversation shifts back to the prosaic topic of mealtime choices, away from the deep, dark waters that flood the heart. When we first met, the words came fast between us, conversations lasting long into the night as we shared our thoughts and fears, hopes and dreams. The process of learning about each other was an exciting exploration. Each time we spoke, more strands from our past were woven into the present we were creating, intertwining the threads of our individual memories into a tapestry rich with shades and hues. But years later, those vibrant colors had faded and I couldn't recall the last time either of us had added a new strand, an unexpected thread. Later. Do you love me? I could be excused for asking this, lying as we are, legs and arms entangled, hearts beating in a counterpoint rhythm. I have to ask. I need to ask. I need to hear the words so I can lay them in my memory, preserving them like the autumn's harvest, saving them for cold winters ahead. The first time we came together, the excitement of the moment overshadowed any fears about the future. Two people overcome with passion, not thinking beyond the touch, the kiss, the split second between being two separate bodies and then one. And afterwards, our quick inhalations gradually slowed down until we matched each other, breath for breath. We laid there skin to skin throughout the long night, unwilling to allow even an infinitesimal space separate us. But over the years, our need for that hours-long physical connection has ebbed. More often than not, a final kiss would signal the end of our lovemaking, still good and warm and wonderful even after all these years, before we would both turn away. Tonight, he holds me close, saying just my name, his breath warm against my cheek. Then, as he rolls from the center of the bed to his side, I noticed the faucet was leaking when you were washing dishes. I'll fix it tomorrow. A dripping faucet wastes water, you know. I know that. I know that water and gas and other natural resources should be conserved, husbanded, used judiciously, not squandered. But is emotion a natural resource? Is it possible to run out of love? Is that why he doesn't speak the words I long to hear? Or has the habit of not speaking overcome the need to talk, to share, to give voice 
to what is still felt deep in the heart.